Hello and welcome to the employee retention dashboard demo video where I will be entering data in this new Excel template from scratch and then we will see how the dashboards get updated and I will also talk about how we can customize this template very very easy. In the previous video I provided the overview of the different features of this Excel template and went over how this can help your organization get better insights about the retention in your organization. Now, in this video, I will be doing a demo. If you have any questions about the templates features or how to use it, please post them in the comment section below. I will definitely get back to you. Now, let's get started. So we will start with the uh, home sheet, which is where you know we have some useful information that you can use to look up how to use Excel templates, how to enter the data, step-by-step -step user guide, all of this will be linked from here. Now let's go into the employee's data, which is, which is the only sheet where we enter data in this template. So I'm gonna go into employee's data sheet. When you download this template, um, you will have no data entered in it. So we will begin by entering information first. First, we will enter the employee name. So I'm just gonna enter employee name one, and then the employee ID. Let's say we give some number. The employee ID is a required field. Now the employee email, and you know, you can just give something and you can store this information that can be completely repurposed, repurposed by you. You can use it for storing any contact information about your employee. Now, now we get into a bunch of attributes, which I will first show you, you know, what type of attributes we have. Here we go. So now we have 14 attributes here for the employee overall, and I will be talking about what these different groups mean. So the first, these two are employee attributes like date of birth and hire date. I've, I've clearly mentioned that do not repurpose it. Reason being the date of birth is used for calculating the age of the employee. The hire date is used for calculating the tenure of the employee. So please do not reuse this for any other purpose. Use it only for date of birth and hire date reasons. Then we have a bunch of attributes. So these two are employee attributes like gender and hire source. You can rename these and use it for other purposes. So if you would like to not track gender in your organization, you wanna track some other attribute, no problem, just rename it and use it, that's it. Um, same thing with hire source. If you wanna rename it, but still use it for tracking hire source, that's fine. If you wanna rename it as something completely different and uh, you know, for example, payment method or how you pay your employee or something like that, that's fine. You can use it for any purpose as you need. And then we have job attributes. So job attributes are things that are job specific and not employee specific. For example, um, the employee may change uh, locations within your company, maybe in location one one day, maybe changes location. So that's fine. You just update the record. Um, so as we go along, um, maybe it might be better to just start typing some information. So let's say this employee, um, you know, 1984, and then the employee was hired on 2017, let's say, and then the gender, let me say female, and then the source of hire was LinkedIn, the location of the employee right now, maybe Sydney, and then maybe a month later, this employee changes from Sydney to another location, let's say. So you just come in and update it, that's it. Employee, let's say, belongs to the finance department. Um, and again, these all these columns, you can rename it and use it as you need. So I'm just gonna use for what is by default, but please note that you can customize it. Um, job type, let's say um, this is a full-time role, and then the job category maybe, um, is it a salaried or hourly paid? So I'm gonna say salaried. Job level is different grades that you can have, and so I'm gonna say maybe this employee is grade M, and then uh, title, so this may be the senior analyst or something like that, the job title. And then the salary, you can put in um, whatever information you want. And please note that these two attributes are not really used in dashboards, meaning they won't go automatically to the dashboards and you can use it to store such information which doesn't have to go to the dashboard. 
Um, by default, salary is not something that is currently shown in the dashboard. Um, so it, it ended up in the um, not in dashboards attribute. Then we have exit attributes. So these three are exit attributes. The exit attributes mean um, only are applicable when employee has left the company, right? So if the employee is still active, you don't put anything. If the employee has left the organization, then you put the date when the employee left the organization and then um, exit type. And this is where we would say voluntary or involuntary. And so that would be, let's say for example, this employee exited um, on fifth, sorry, May 4, 2019. And then the reason why the employee left was, let's say, a personal reason. So that's how you input information into this template. So I'm gonna let's take a look at the retention dashboard. It gets automatically updated. We didn't have to do refresh all, but let's do refresh all because the other two dashboards use pivot tables, and we have to hit refresh all. Um, so the um, the data is getting updated. So let's say this employee is not. Exited. So let's say the employee is still active. If I go back here, now it'll say active employees one, turnover rate is zero because nobody has exited. No hires have been made in this year, in the last 12 months. And uh, this retention dashboard automatically shows the last 12 months. So today here we are in December, 2019. So I can look back the 12 months, including this December. And when we go into January, this will automatically show January all the way back to February of last year. So it's automatic. And then you can see retention rate, average tenure of employees and all that information, you know, automatically updated. If I go into the snapshot dashboard, I can see that this is, uh, there's only one employee um, and I have to hit refresh. Every time you make a change to the input data in the employee's data, you have to hit refresh all for the dashboard to get updated information. So right now I can see that there's only one employee and that employee is female and in the age of 30 to 40, sourced from LinkedIn, located in London, full-time salaried, uh, job level M in the finance department. So all of that information is immediately available to you. Now, there is one, when you get started, you wanna make sure that you you know, take all the information about your existing employees and put it in here. And when you try to put that in here, you can always copy the data from another spreadsheet that you may have. So let me show you a quick demo of that. So here is a file that I have where I already have all this employee information. For me to move all that over into this blank template, it's very easy. I'm just gonna click on this where it goes all the way to the end i select everything so what i've done is i've selected all the input data entered in this other spreadsheet i'm going to copy and this is very imp there are two important things here one is when you're copying data from another spreadsheet the columns have to be exactly the same as have been aligned here in my case it is in your case if it's not i'll tell you briefly how to do that um, but that is very important. You check and make sure that the columns are aligned. They have to be the exact same order of the columns um, in order for this method to work. So I copy, right click copy. I come over here, right click in cell A4. This is very important. I do paste as values. You, It's always better to paste as values, do not paste as paste. Like do not do control V or do not do paste. And the reason is, if your other spreadsheet has formulas and formatting and other name ranges and things like that, we don't want any of that to come over to this template. And um, that's why you always do paste as values. So once you paste as values, you can see that it's all in here. Now I go to the retention dashboard. There we go. Now we have all the data about your active employees. So this is how you can migrate all of your existing employee data over to this template within a few minutes, depending on how ready your data is, the actual pasting takes only seconds. But the, um, as I mentioned in your um, organization, if you did not have the readily um, organized information like this, let's say you have employee name, but then the uh, higher source is in a different order, let's say, then you can always reorganize the columns in your source spreadsheet. That's one option. 
or you can just say, I'm going to copy a few columns at once. So I can select a column of data. I come over here to our template and I go to the specific column that I can paste, right click, paste as values. So this is how you can paste a few columns or one column at a time from your organization spreadsheet into this template. So that kind of covers the how you can copy the data from over from your uh, spreadsheet into this template. Two key things, make sure that the columns are aligned, otherwise do it you know, column at a time, one column at a time or a few columns at a time. Second important thing, always paste as values. That's how you make sure that the, um, the template is not um, uh, negatively impacted due to formulas from your other spreadsheet. Okay, so now that covers the employee uh, data information, how to enter the data. Um, as I mentioned, you can always come back if an employee has changed location, just come in and update the data. If the employee has left the organization, you you know input these three attributes at the end. If the employee, um, if a new employee has started, you go to the last and then you add a new employee, just like this. And then you enter all the attributes for that employee and then that's it, that's all you have to do. Now, let's look at how the dashboards work. This is um, not an interactive dashboard, meaning it automatically updates, but you don't have to, you cannot slice and dice it. Um, so there's nothing much about it. We have covered all these key um, retention metrics in the previous video as well, um, but these are all automatically calculated and shows by month for the last 12 months. The snapshot dashboard is interactive and you can see that it, it still says only one employee, even though we have entered a lot of data now, and that's because we have not refreshed. So a key part um, you have to do is to hit refresh all so that all the new data that you've entered comes through to the dashboard. And once it's done, you can click on it to you know interact with it. You can do only part-time employees. No, I wanna see all employees. I have to see in specific location and I can do multiple filters like, okay, Chicago and Cairo um, and Beijing. So you can do all this, or you can say, show me all employees, show me all locations. Um, you can do all these filtering by all these different attributes. That's uh, very straightforward. Um, you'll see the load number of employees, you will see the tenure. So you see two key metrics um, broken down here. Now let's talk about how you can customize it. So for example, if I want this to be uh, named differently, so I can go in and say slicer settings, and then now this will give me an option to rename what I want this to be displayed, if you want it to be displayed differently. Um, let's say you don't want the slicer at all, you click on it and you delete it, it goes away. And that's how you can customize it. I do undo because I wanna keep it. And then let's say, for example, I see the numbers here, oh, I have a lot more locations than departments. I don't need um, this um, size of the department, so I can just narrow it down uh, or make it less taller or make it shorter. And then I can make this taller so that I can see more uh, clearly what's going on with the different locations. And if I need you know, more, I can just maybe make something like this so I can see clearly. And I can reorganize it by saying, okay, I only have you know, two job categories, so I don't need to take up more space. And then I only have you know, um, two, um, three job levels, so I don't need that much space. So I can now move my department over here. So this is how I you can customize the dashboards exactly the way you want it because it's all modular. Each of this is a different chart. You can resize it, rename it, um, and repurpose it as you need to make sure that it makes. Um, so the whole point is about customization and flexibility to change um, according to your business's needs. Now, same thing up, applies to the exit dashboard as well. This is very specific to the exit employees, so only the employees who exit. And um, so you will see the exit reason, exit type. These are also filters, so I can say only show me voluntary. And the same concept of re resizing, up, you know, if you want to have more space or less space, you can just, you know, make the charts. Or you can also put it in a second page if you want, uh, if you need to. The dashboards in the template are already set for printing. So you don't have to do anything more if you're using the same number of pages as the default dashboard is. 
then you can just go and file hit print and you are ready to print the dashboard. So for example, let me go here, let me say print. I can see that it's already preset for printing. Similarly with a snapshot dash, I can go in and say file print. This is because I've selected this. If I don't select on a chart, I can go in print and I can see the first page. I can go to the second page. There we go. So this is how easy to print information. You can export it to PDF and share. So you could say file, you know, export, and that'll allow you to export it. Um, you can also, um, you know, put this file on a shared drive, like an OneDrive, uh, and open it in Excel online so that, you know, you can give access to multiple employees in your organization to work with this data. So this is um, how you can use the template. And if you want to, for example, um, rename this. So let's say I want to call it, instead of higher source, I just want to call it source. I just click on rename the source and I go to my snapshot dashboard, you now see that it's called source. It's called source. Um, this automatically happened. Uh, we didn't have to do any modifications other than just renaming it. Uh, instead of location, you know, I want to call it LOC uh, or any other um, word. I come in here, now this will say LOC. So that's how you can rename the um, fields or the attributes and the dashboards will automatically update accordingly. So to summarize what we went through to, uh, in this video is how you can input data into this employee's data sheet, how you can bring over lots of data all at once, how you can update when employees exit, and then you saw how the dashboards get automatically updated. You also saw how you can customize the dashboard by making the charts longer or wider or shorter, and then you can remove the slicers, rename the slicers, um, and um, you saw how we can print the dashboards and also export to PDF. And um, so that basically covers all the features of this Excel template. If you have any questions or if you, if you want, if you have any suggestions for new features, please post them in the comment section below. This template is available uh, at in Zara.com. I will be providing the link to the in the video description below. You can click on it and learn more about the product. And if you have any um, questions, let me know. Thank you very much for watching.